Hi, I'm Sad Alex. Check out our interview at creativedisc.com, the number one music website in Indonesia. Hey, CD lovers, welcome back to another Creative Disc exclusive interview with me, Junde Yuwono. And today I'm accompanied by the multi talented singer, songwriter, producer, illustrator, and also a dancer, too. If you proclaim yourself as a sad girl or sad boy, you better get around because here with me now is Alex Sad, aka Sad Alex. Hi, Sad Alex. How are you? Wow, that was that was an intro for the ages. That was amazing. I want you to say that to thank me every morning. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you so much for having us. Uh, and we can meet virtually today. And How are you right now? How's everything going on uh, down there? Things are good. Um, I'm in Los Angeles and mm-hmm. we're still kind of recovering from the midst of this pandemic. So things aren't quite normal, you know, daily life. But I did have a session mm-hmm. today and things are slowly starting to get into like stu- sessions back in studios. So I did have a session with someone today and, mm-hmm. and this is my, my room. <laughs> cool. So welcome to- <laughs> Yeah. Um, and this is like where my home studio setup is. Um, I recently moved, so I'm in a, a house now in kind of the east side of Los Angeles and just uh-huh. busy, really busy with the existing releases. We still are really heavy on the rollout of the last single I just put out, which is I'm glad that you found someone. And then also yeah. preparing for a lot of new releases down the line as well, too. So we're always, we always working. Oh, you keep yourself busy during this quarantine, right? I I did. I have been quite busy. It's kind of how I it's how I function. How I you know. <laughs> okay. So I know that we've been doing this quarantine thing for some time, right? But we still couldn't even travel until now. So after this pandemic is over, I I hope you are a traveler kind of person. But if you can travel somewhere. Is there any place that you're dying to visit? I'd like to go to the Middle East, um, where I'm from. I've never been, um, so I know my sister's been to like Jerusalem and um, like where places where my I have family still in like Jordan and kind of surrounding wow. areas. So I, and I'm reading mm-hmm. currently reading a book that's kind of set in that area, and I it's been kind of it making me itch to go back because that's um, down the line. I'd like to get. Invest, involved in some more like whether it's charity work or like giving back to that community because there's not there's mm-hmm. a few artists that are representing like that culture like DJ Khaled and like that's yeah. the only one that I just thought of off the top of my head but would love to team up with DJ Khaled he's great and um, wow. yeah it's the, I want to try to do it you know represent my my people a bit if I can and mm-hmm. try to help out because he's struggling you know so yeah That would be amazing. Though, help. Uh, if, yeah, if 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 you could do some collaboration with DJ Khaled, that would be amazing. I mean, like oh, he's uh, he's one he's one of the talented producer at DJ of course. And do you, you have also, uh, <laughs> I will put this in, in the chat box so that you can uh, reach out to him okay. after this. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, Sad Alex, uh, let's get to know uh, Sad Alex a little bit. Uh, as I told our listener and also watcher, uh, how you are multi talented. You are singer, songwriter, but also an artist, illustrator, and even a dancer. Wow, I never had a chance to interview this. What is it like this kind of person before? I mean, like, wow. Would you tell us why you chose to working in the art industry, though? Um, well, you're doing me a lot of you're 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 amping me up a lot. I really appreciate. It. It's very kind of you. I think I I do all of those things. To say that I am all of those things, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm selling myself short. But I because a lot of those things, like I actually started primarily with um, dance was the first thing, and I never was a professional dancer. I was a very good amateur dancer, and I did it all through college, and I was president of my dance company there at Loyola mm-hmm. University, Maryland. It was a very big part of my life, but I never was good enough to be. It's a very difficult, if you think the window to become a professional musician is hard enough, to become a professional dancer is arguably even harder in some ways, because there's far less outlets and ways for you to make a living, and so you really have to be phenomenally good and um yeah. i definitely wasn't quite there but i do and i i got some pretty serious injuries which prevented me from 
going further with it. But now my injuries have started to get better. And so now I can finally get into it recreationally again. And I, I really, I've, I've been dying for years to do some sort of dance video to go along with the music. And so that's definitely in my mind. Now I bring it up pretty much every song. I'm like, can we do a dance one for this? Can we do a dance one for this? And it hasn't happened yet. So hopefully for one of these ones next year, I'd really love to do a dance one. Um, and the art was more, I've always done art. I've always been okay at drawing, but that was more out of necessity for the music. Cause then I got into music more seriously. And as you start becoming an artist and you have to do releases and draw artwork and all that stuff, you find it's, it's pretty difficult when you're teaming up with graphic designers and people, there's a lot of, it's a lot of money and it's a lot of like trying to communicate what you want visually to somebody and they send you back something and you're like, I don't know if I like this. And then you have to pay $500 for it. And you just feel weird or more than that. And it's, it's, it's a lot. So I finally just got to the point and expressing myself visually, like I'm not a big fashion person. I'm not a big, those are not things that I, I really admire people that have mastered aesthetic and fashion and that kind of stuff, because that's not where my brain goes. So the drawing thing was really my first attempt to A, just like break down visuals to a more simple thing that I felt like I could handle and also just keep my overhead low <laughs> so that so that I could draw my own artwork and we've been in so many I've, it's happened more often than not that we're on a tight deadline and I draw the artwork the day before the song is due like the day before we have to send it in and that's a really difficult thing to do if you're working with graphic designers and stuff so I appreciate the flexibility and having the control to do it I've also gotten a lot better I've, I've noticed um because I do it on my vlogs as well I'll do like live drawing and as I've done that more it's improved the drawing skill set and so that is that is fun. And now I've actually have been doing some more kind of commission pieces and people, other artists asking me to draw artwork for their releases. So it's been kind of opening this world that I didn't expect to be involved in, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah. The way you uh, tell us about that background of yours, it's like, wow, it's, it's wow me. And, and even if you told us like that lightly, but it feels like not that light at all. I mean, like creating some music and also the artwork of, uh, of the music and also working with some other names and how you manage all that. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's amazing how do you do that. Um, time management is difficult. <laughs> and I, I think I always True. think that I do, I always imagine that I can do more in a day and more in a day, but when it, it is, because I think there are enough, there are enough hours in the day and like realistically I can get done, um, Sometimes you work better when you're on a deadline. That's what I almost miss about um, when things are more scheduled and structured. A lot of times, like when you have more things to do, this is sounds really stupid, but when you have more things to do, you get more done. Like if you have, if you know you only have from 12 to four to work on music, you're going to be far more intentional about working during those four hours than you are if you have from like 9 a.m. to uh, forever. If you just have the whole day to work on music, you'll end up messing around and not doing you know what you're supposed to be doing and and I think right now especially because we have so much more time than we are used to I have been trying to do other things and get involved with like if I feel like just sitting down and drawing one day I do that and if, it, if I want to step away from music for a second and focus on a different do a yoga class or like whatever or maybe a day I just want to read a book or like take a hike like those all contribute to the greater good I think of your creativity and um, having, you know, refilling the sponge as it were, so you can have something to create from. And so that's mm -hmm. one thing that's been nice about this time is it kind of allows you to have a bit of a healthier outlook towards like your creative process, but it's, uh, there's also downsides to it too. Okay. So Alex, um, as a musician now, you've already releasing a bunch of a great songs, including the most recent one that you told us before, I'm glad that you found someone. It also featured Nas in it. Can you tell yeah. us some more about the song though? How it is made in the first place? Yeah, so that's one, that song's actually been in development for a while. I wrote the first version of it on my own maybe almost three years ago by myself oh, okay. in my bedroom mm -hmm. in Koreatown when I lived in Koreatown in a different part of Los Angeles. And um, I uh, wrote this, it probably took me about 20 minutes to write it. I produce the basic framework of it like the main little guitar sample and the, the little vocal chop thing that you hear that was all all in my demo that i'd made and um i remember it, it happened very quickly i didn't think much of it i actually didn't know 
so it was particularly good and I submitted it into a couple of the people that I send my songs into and I immediately got some really good feedback on it which was a bit like people like even I don't know they just responded very quickly and very positively so I was like okay this is interesting and I I was actually playing a birthday party for a friend a few days later um and it was just a stripped down like little raw performance and I was like you know what I wasn't gonna play it but I was like you know what I kind of want to test drive this new song and mm. I played it and it was this room full of guys and by the last chorus they were all singing the words to this chorus and that was a really remarkable thing that's it that had never happened to me before that kind of reaction to a chorus and just the immediate latching to it was really um was really remarkable for me as a songwriter and then one of the people in that room was my friend ethan who works closely with nash he was at one, one at one point his like doing some assistant slash like managerial day-to-day -day work for him and mm -hmm. he um connected me with him and played the song and then we decided now she's like i'd love to like get on get on this with you and so we rewrote the we changed it because it all used to be from the girl's perspective and so we added him in to provide the guy's perspective and so that second chorus changes which was a bit of a a bit of a risk because it was kind of it's a little bit of a faux pas to like change the words in the chorus but it just felt really good and it felt very um it kind of gave a universal anthem not just for the girls but for the guys too and um i and I think it, it just kind of released everybody, all like the, all genders, all sexualities, like whatever, everybody can have like their moment of that. And everyone relates to that. Everyone's had that experience it, it, for the most part. And it's, um, so I felt like it's landed really well. So that was kind of the whole, then we wrote it, we had it recorded and it just kind of, it was one of the songs that we had ready to go for this year. So it's really, mm -hmm. it's really nice to finally birth a song after a long gestation, yeah. <laughs> as it were, yeah. so. Um, no, I'm really excited and I love Garrett. I think he's super talented and he's a lot of fun to work with and um, We have a couple other songs that we've been working on too. So it's been it's been really good really nice to have collaborators Cool, so I do love the song also because uh, it told us uh, that's, That totally can relate to most of the people. That's why I, I bet that's why all of the people that you come with with the acoustic version when uh, the birthday party happened they all sing their heart out because i mean like uh who never broke up with someone and have a jealousy that their ex already happy with someone else right how do you come up with the idea i mean like it's it's for me it's kind of like passive aggressive song for some reason because uh the first uh the first say that i know uh, i'm happy but in the chorus you said like no i'm not that happy i'm jealous how, how did you come up with the idea, Alex? Well, I think the reason and typically what I think the best ideas are is that I really didn't put a lot of thought into it. It was something like, um, it was a very real feeling of what I was feeling about this person that um, where you pretty immediately found, you know, it's more like the, and this has happened to me a lot when you're with somebody and they're un, unwilling to get serious with you for whatever reason and then, and they claim they're not ready for that. And then immediately after that, they get serious with someone else. And we're a, I'm an adult. I'm a not. I'm not. You know. I try to be mature about those sort of things. And so for the most part, you want to put on the whole thing that like, yeah, no, I'm good for the best. Like all of those things. And then, but typically, especially if you're drinking or if you see them out with that person or whatever it is, you sometimes just want to lean into that that immature jealousy even just for a moment even just for yourself and um so that was it really was i was drinking by myself in my apartment writing that song and it was a very real train of thought i think i first hit that chorus as a joke and i was laughing to myself thinking haha like i won't actually i won't actually do that but then i was like i guess i could actually do that <laughs> and so i just kind of took the risk because in my mind I was like well you know who cares I, I write this and maybe it just it's my computer and it's my own personal little therapy session but then it ended up I think that's the best the biggest thing right now there's so much music coming out and it's really hard to um there's so much great music coming out really talented writers talented singers all that it's very hard to reinvent the wheel or do something that sounds fresh and so the only way you really have a chance of doing that is by taking a risk and sometimes risks work and sometimes risks don't work and you kind of have to just navigate and mitigate that risk until you hit the right target and this was just a nice opportunity where i think we did and it's really special to me it's a good song
Great. So I'm glad that uh, you're happy. It's it, it, uh, what is it like? It's way more relatable to to most of the people because like everyone gotta be at some point in their life gotta be feel that the same way, right? So since the song is about someone who's not happy to see their ex with someone else, can you give us some tips on how to be happy while still still in a part of the moving on life? I think moving on, I think part of moving on is letting yourself go through that phase. And I think, and that goes across the board for a lot of emotions. If you are constantly running away from the emotion that you're scared to feel, you, mm-hmm. you, you won't move on. You have to go through the feeling. I think a lot of time is spent trying to avoid unpleasant feelings. And we put this big stigma on what that unpleasant feeling is. And it's like, no, like, at some point you are you are a human being and unpleasant things happen and you have to deal with those emotions and if you put it off you are just putting off you're essentially creating a, a time bomb that will will go off at some point if not worse than if you just deal with it right now so it's like go into it be sad be angry be whatever but then be you know reflect on that and understand when you've when you've spent your ample time in that place and then you can kind of like once you're in it then you can kind of be like you know what this really isn't like serving me for the greater good of like my future and it, and it kind of it does is like a release you you get mad you have a good cry one night you vent to somebody about it a friend or whatever it is and then you go th- through that and then you can climb out of it and you wouldn't have been able to climb out if you didn't go in first mm. wow that's a nice nice tips because I know that uh, on Instagram, you also kind of have some uh, interaction with your friends if they want to tell you uh, you their life stories and you come up with some suggestion and sit for them. It's kind of nice to connect to your friends, right? To our social. Why Why do you do that? I, why, why do you have to be honest and uh, give something to them? Well, first, I, I do emphasize that I'm not a professional. So please take any advice. <laughs> it's not professionally. Um, and I think it's what well, it's less of me trying to give it I'm not out here trying to act like I have anything figured out. I'm a 29 year old single woman that still drunk quiet cries quite a bit. But um, I think for me just doing the artist like focusing on the artist stuff right now now, um, which was a, a bit of a it was something that sort of happened naturally too. I was focusing on songwriting and then this this artist project kind of got birthed and started doing well. And it was birthed because I was being honest with myself. I wasn't trying to, I was trying a few different artist things before that that weren't working because I wasn't being very honest with myself. And so the second I started doing that, it started working. And I think I owe it to anyone that cares about my project. The, the least I can do is be honest with them because i think i'm not trying i'm trying to make sure i put myself in the most authentic lane possible i want to like when i it sometimes does take me a minute to get through them but i go through all the dms myself from people i respond i read them i listen to the song links i do all of those things because i know i've been in places where i've reached out to people that i look up to and sometimes didn't get the response that i wanted or i've had people that you know broke my heart and didn't do it in the way that i really would have gotten better closure from so the only thing I have control of now is how I treat people that come into my life. And I've, and that's for the good or the bad. Sometimes I've posted things that offended people and I had some ne- negative comments. And so I immediately DM'd them and said, hey, I'm so sorry that this offended you. And please let me know what I can do better and like all that stuff. Cause that is something we're a very real thing that we're dealing with in this society now too. So it's really like, I, all I'm trying to do every day is make music that's true to me and if i am being this artist it's it's not i'm not trying to put on an artist cape i am myself i don't try to put on a front of anything it's just this is who i am so that's what i try to give to the people that are on board wow that's a really nice point of view so alex uh i believe that uh indonesian people also uh, becoming your fans and is there any message though to your Indonesian fans who happen to follow you from since the beginning of your career perhaps or DMing you and try to respond to you? Is there any message to them? 
I love my Indonesian fans. And that's also because I know some of them are even, they latched on from the songs that I did with Mickey and some of that 88 Rising um, artist as well. And I was really, really touched and kind of blown away that I even had people that were keeping track of those things. Like I didn't know if people had connected that me, that it was me that had written that song and whatever. So I was really, um, it was really special for, for, it's really nice when stuff like that's going on without you even realizing it. And I think they are, they're always honest and sharing full stories and they are, they don't hold back at all. And they tell me really, they're always saying very kind things. And so all I, and I've been to, in, I've only been to in, Indonesia once, but I really like to go back. I went to Bali, <laughs> so I was, I was just there for like a, um, for like a, a quick trip, but I'd love to go back once traveling opens up and I'd love to I know there's a lot of a lot of my friends have played show, there's shows there's and it looks so much fun so I'd love to do that and it's just really cool that I even have friends in Indonesia that I don't even know about I'd like to meet you I'd like to hang out and we can have a you know whatever a, a beer or something uh <laughs> let's go let's go let's go <laughs> or perhaps we can meet in Bali and hang out a little bit in a in a beach or some something it, it will be nice though And what's the beer in Bali? I forget what we were drinking. It's Bintang. I think, yes, that's what it was. Bintang. Bintang. Bintang is the best beer, I guess, for for all the people. I don't know if if uh, if the people watching this and never taste that beer, you have to taste that beer. Like yeah, it was a good one. Great beer. It was, it's really nice. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, and we can meet virtually like this, and it's. It's so nice to have some insight from you and uh, some uh, tips from you to moving on. Maybe some people needed that right now and I can't wait to have you in Indonesia and have a show and show that we can hang out a little bit more and catch up a little bit more next year perhaps. I guess. Yeah. That would be awesome. I will, I'll hopefully if, if things are, you know, calming down a bit, we'll definitely plan a trip to Indonesia and we'll drink bin tangs and we'll, we'll Go to shows, it'll be great. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs>